Hey, Chris Sider here, and today I'm gonna to be teaching you what to do if you reach out to your ex and they don't respond to you. But before we get to that, first I'd like to ask you a question. Are you wondering if this is even worth your time, if you even have a chance with your ex? Well, if you are, then I want you to stop by my website right here, right now, drop everything you're doing because I put together a quiz designed to tell you what kind of chance you have of getting your ex back. This isn't one of those rinky-dink quizzes that's just gonna spit out some random number. No, I'm actually gonna take your answers, run them through a special algorithm, and then based on my own personal experience and what I've seen out there, I'm gonna tell you what kind of chance you have of getting your ex back. A lot of people wonder what to do when they reach out to their ex and their ex doesn't respond to them. But in my experience, it really boils down to two simple concepts. So what I'd like to do for you today is actually take a moment to make this video and teach you about those two simple concepts. So hopefully if you shore these things up, when you do reach out to your ex, you're going to get the response that you desire. So the first big thing I want you to keep in mind is that a lot of times when I'm working with my clients one-on-one -on -one and we're working on text messages, the really big three line that I see between situation to situation is that people come up with some really boring texts. Simply texting, hey, what's up? How's it hanging? How's it going, man? I have no idea why I just turned into a surfer dude. Here's the point. Simply texting one word text messages without really much substance at all isn't going to cut it. Your ex is going to see that text message and be like, no thanks. That's not what you wanna have happen. Now, the problem that I see people running into time and time again is they really don't know how to craft an interesting text message. So what I'd like to do for you today is actually give you a quick crash course on how you need to compose interesting text messages that will yield responses from people in general. Crafting a really interesting text message boils down to three key components. You've got the hook, you've got curiosity, and you've got the payoff. So let's go down this little mini list. First, we have the hook. Now, when I start talking about the hook, I'm not saying an actual hook. I'm saying you need to have something to hook your ex into the text. There needs to be some reason that he'll want to, number one, read it, and number two, respond to it. So I'm actually going to use an example from my own life that happened to me a couple of weeks ago. I was sitting at my desk actually editing a YouTube video for YouTube, and I got a text message from my wife. The text quite simply said, I did something and I'm really scared to tell you about it. And do you see how good of a hook that is? Upon reading that text message, I'm immediately hooked in and, number two, curious about what happened. Now, out of all the text messages that I have seen and helped people with, curiosity seems to be the most difficult thing to manage. People really struggle with it. So let's look at the text message that my wife sent to me. What about that text message makes it curious? What makes me actually curious to find out the answer to what she is scared to tell me about? Well, it's actually this part I have underlined right here. By simply using the word scared, I picture an image of her being scared or her doing something wrong. This makes me curious and creates an open loop. Now, the Zygarnik effect teaches us that people remember uncompleted tasks better than completed ones. In other words, when there's an open loop, we seek to close the loop. So if you're gonna craft a text message to your ex, make sure there's some type of open loop there to create the curiosity. Now, this leads us to the third and final thing that every great text message needs to have, a payoff. Now, when comedians are working on jokes, they have what is called the payoff. That's the part of the joke that makes everything funny. But the setup leading up to that payoff is just as important as the payoff itself. So what we've talked about so far is the setup. What we're about to talk about is going to be the payoff. Now, as a general rule of thumb, you want your payoff to be interesting, something that really captures your ex's imagination and sometimes even a little funny. So my wife texts me that she's scared to tell me something. After I see this text, I look at it and immediately go to the living room where she and my daughter are. She proceeds to tell me that she has 
in an attempt to clean, decided to put watermelon down the entire toilet. Watermelon. She then proceeded to try to flush the toilet, which I, of course, clogged the toilet. And so I spent the rest of the night getting watermelon out of the toilet. Now maybe someone else would have been mad about hearing that their wife or significant other threw watermelon down the toilet as opposed to just throwing it out. But I actually wasn't because the way she actually set the text message up made me think that she had done something much more serious. So in a weird way, the payoff of her actually throwing the watermelon down the toilet didn't really freak me out as much because my mind had already jumped to, did she cheat on me? Did she do something bad to me? Did she break something in the house? So upon hearing that the watermelon was kind of the big thing she was scared to tell me about, I was actually pretty relieved. Now, the important thing I want you to really grasp here is this idea of a roller coaster, right? So my emotions go through this roller coaster all from this one text. She sets the text up by simply saying she's scared to tell me something. Immediately my emotions go up. I'm worried about what potentially will happen. I have to close that loop. So I go and talk to her to find out what she's scared to tell me about. She then proceeds to tell me about what happened. Now I'm a little bit relieved. The roller coaster's kind of gone down. The more you can kind of make your ex go through this roller coaster of emotions, the more you will actually intrigue him. But of course, that's only one of the things that I see people really kind of mess up when it comes to not getting a response from their ex. Remember, just having a text that's not interesting enough. Of course, there is that second thing, and that second thing is timing. Now, when I say timing, I don't mean timing just from a perspective of, are you texting your ex at the right time? Certainly that can be included, but also timing in the overall process. What have you done so far before you've actually tried reaching out to your ex? Sometimes you need to wait more time before they'll even be open to responding to you. Sometimes you need to do something more wisely with that time. That's why we have a very specific value chain or value ladder that we try to take people through when they're trying to get their exes back and when they're trying to get a response from their ex. Now, timing is a really under-talked about thing. No one really even tells you about the importance of it. But make no mistake about it, it's extremely important if you want to have a really great chance of getting your ex back, much less getting a response from them. So if you haven't already, make sure you stop by our website and actually read some of the articles that I've written about it. They're free, it's not going to cost you anything, and it's going to revolutionize the way you actually think about this entire process. There's a reason we have a value chain in place read about it. Hey guys, thank you so much as always for getting to the end of this video. I really appreciate every viewer out there. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. You can simply look for the red subscribe button somewhere around here. YouTube's always changing things up. And if you haven't already, please stop by our website and take our X Recovery Chances quiz. I put that quiz together for you to help you understand what kind of chances you will have. Take care.